Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Potcotter, and you're listening to Call Talk for July 22nd, 2022. Today's topic is when you need the coaching, agents and managers need coaches to succeed. If you're listening live, we invite you to be part of the show and ask questions. Here's how you do it. You can email me at calltalk at benchmarkportal.com. I want to remind everyone that all of our shows are archived and available to listen to at Benchmark Portal any time of the day. And now with that, I would like to introduce the host of the show, Bruce Belfiore. Hello, everybody, and thank you very much, Alan. We're uh, really uh, delighted to be welcoming back Mitchell Levy, a uh, global credibility expert. He's a two-times TEDx speaker and author of over 60 books. He created the Credibility Nation community and is on an accomplished entrepreneur who has created businesses, including four publishing companies. Mitchell was last on a Call Talk in November 2021, and it's really great to be welcoming you back to the show, Mitchell. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. Uh, I, I always enjoy a good, healthy conversation with you. <laughs> we always have a good time. Well, the last time you were on, we talked a lot about credibility and clarity, and today we're focusing on coaching, and specifically when our listeners and their colleagues as managers need coaching to help them do their job better and to develop their careers, to enhance their credibility, and really to help them out as, uh, as human beings. Uh, so first, let's just define what we mean by coaching as it exists for mid-level and senior managers. Because, Mitchell, as we all know, coaching in the contact center uh, space is usually, is almost always referring to coaching for frontline agents. And unfortunately, the idea of coaching to help those above the agent level is oftentimes just not even on the table, but it should be for <laughs> supervisors, for people who are, um, you know, uh, uh, operational, special operational managers, like in workforce management uh, and in other areas, and obviously also for uh, the senior managers and in, in a contact center who are our biggest listener group, in fact, in, in this audience. So uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about your thoughts about what coaching actually can mean to them. You know, if, if you don't mind, can I – can I do a little bit of coaching of you and saying what, what question you should ask me first? And sure. then I'll yeah. answer that question and then answer the coaching question. So sounds, thank sounds you. Sounds good. Yep. So, the, and, and by the way, this is just an example of what good uh, managing up coaching is all about. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. The question you should ask is, Mitchell, how do you have context to talk about this conversation? Mm-hmm. So, okay, Mitch, so I'll, how I'll, do you have I'll, context to talk about this conversation? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So in November, I was asked to join, for those who know the name Marshall Goldsmith, he is the number one CEO coach in the world. He has an organization called 100 Coaches. So I, I was asked uh, to join that. So I'm now part of the 100 Coaches organization. And mm -hmm. what that did for me is it, it made me recognize the importance of, in the past, the executive coaching that I would do just sort of came because of the jobs I had. I sat on the board of a NASDAQ firm for nine years. Um, that firm actually was in the call center business, right? So I'm very familiar with that space. I also ran four CEO networking groups for a decade, and a number of my clients are executive-level individuals that I do coaching with. And so when you and I talked last and we did a catch-up, you said, oh, that's really interesting. Mitchell, tell me more. Let's, let's go on the air and talk about it. So I just right. thought I would share the – when you're talking with somebody, part of coaching is, is walking – both being a coach and being coachable – is recognizing sometimes that we don't always know the rules of the game. Right, because we we assume coaching is all about well, let's let's coach the person who can then do a better job of selling or a better job of customer support, and and what we're really doing there is is we're going through a robust hands-on learning experience. You know, it's training, right? Now, 
executive coaching or coaching for high level managers is a little bit or significantly more well rounded, certainly more diverse. And, and I will start off with a simple, well, simple statement. The question I'm going to say is if, if one person is coaching another, but they both need to have respect for each other. Right. Secondly, both people are going to learn from each other. Mm-hmm. Probably the third is, is that we need to have a handle on what the expected output of the coaching relationship is. Right? So before we start, yeah, so before we start, the way I think about coaching is, is let's make sure we understand the inputs and the outputs, okay? The input is that both people like each other. They respect each other. They understand where they're coming from. They at least have an idea of who that person is today. And then the output is, and as a good executive coach, the first question I'm always going to ask, hey, what would you like coming out of this relationship? What would be a good end product? Mm-hmm. Now, Bruce, here's the cool part. I'm going to hear it, but I'm also going to ask myself, is that the right cool end product? And mm-hmm. part, of the, part of the initial coaching is to, is to make sure we define the output of what we want. Now, the output could be, hey, I'm really good in the division I'm working in, but I can't speak to people who are in marketing. I don't know how to speak to these people, or I don't know how to speak to the engineers, or I don't know how to speak to – and fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. No, actually, that, uh, if I could just stop you there for a second, that is a major issue for a lot of people who are managers in our field. Uh, you've hit a nail right on the head with regard to the ability to communicate, to reach out across and to communicate across silos uh, to the people in marketing who oftentimes have a huge impact on volumes that come into the call center because of things that they do, right, that result in people picking up the phone or getting on emails and sending us uh, informa- uh, sending us queries. Um, and similarly, uh, IT, you know, think about the fact that the IT mindset and the IT personality type is so different from the typical uh, contact center manager personality and mindset. And so what you're saying there is extremely valuable, valid, because it's oftentimes difficult for people to successfully communicate across those silos. So I'll let you pick it up again from there. No, you're doing great. <laughs> so I I know this sounds – most of the time when – when you and I have a conversation when we're done, you say, Mitchell, that was really simple. And I'm just going to say, <laughs> if, if life is done properly, everything in life is really simple. I'm not saying it's easy to do. It's very mm-hmm. simple. And most of the time, the reason why we don't understand across different silos is, is because companies shouldn't necessarily be structured in a silo way like they are today and pitted against each other like they are today. Yep. But let's not, let's yep. not worry about that. Okay. Unless you're in a position to change that, then I absolutely want to talk to you, but let's not worry about that. But the thing is, if we understand, if we're talking with somebody who's in a different functional area, one of the easiest things to do is, is, is understand what, what are their inputs and outputs. What are, what's important to them and what are they getting out? And what often happens, I know this is really simple, what often happens, we get stuck somewhere in the, in the middle, somewhere I call it the black box. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. can, I, can I paint a, I'm going to paint a visual. If you're listening to this right now and you're in front of a screen or if you have a piece of paper, just draw on the piece of paper a box, and I would label that box a black box. And then what you do is do a line that goes into the black box and call that input, and then do a line coming out of the black box and call that output. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, did you, see the, did you see or read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Do you know that book? Oh, my gosh. Years ago, I did, Yes. I mean, right, decades well, ago. <laughs> I know, I know. So the, the, um, the question that is asked in the in, 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 uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is, what is the answer to the life universe and everything? 
mm-hmm. and 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 the answer is 42, right? And and then they they go, well, hey, you would understand what 42 means if you asked the right question, right? So. What I'm going to say is this input-output box, this black box, the input-output diagram, is really the answer to life, universe, and everything. And it's understanding we spend as humans so much time inside the black box where we're not seeing the bigger picture. We're not seeing outside the scope. We get into arguments and disagreements because we're not seeing the bigger picture. Whereas if, you, if, if, if you're in the call center and you want to know what marketing or IT does, you need to – understand their inputs and outputs. Uh Part of having a coach is when you've defined what you want your output to be, the coach's job is to help you get there. Now, it's not always they're going to say, hey, read this book or do this project or let me tell you what you need to do. Because what happens, we learn from experience. We learn from doing ourselves. We learn from understanding. And, uh-huh. and so coaches approach, uh, by the way, there are many different styles of coaches, many different appro- uh, ways to do things. And the higher you get in the organization, the, typically the, the higher and more, more robust the type of coach is in terms of helping you understand a bigger picture and potentially a picture that might even be bigger than what you, that what you asked your output to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And I mean, I think one of the things we should make clear to our listeners too, is the fact that you know, when we're talking about a coach, it's, it's a person, it's a person with a lot of experience who obviously charges some money and who uh, listens, talks, understands, Right and then is able to advise in a way that is going to help you as a manager be more successful. And they'll be able to do that because they understand a lot of things, that, well, all the things that you've been talking about, which is that oftentimes uh, communicating is the key thing with other people, whether it's across silos or whether it's up with senior management or whether it's communicating down to folks who report to us. And that, uh, as you said, it sounds simple, but it's not always easy. And <laughs> having somebody to act as the coach is kind of your guide uh, and to test you and to actually be the sounding board because you could say, you know, I, I, I reached out to my people and my folks in, uh, in, in marketing, and uh, we, we just were just talking by each other. And, uh, you know, you, really helping them understand why that might be and suggesting things like, well, you really should have coffee with them every week or at least a call with them every week uh, because, I mean, it's just like with anything. You get to know people when you spend time with them and you communicate with them a lot. So I, I think that fits in with what you're talking about and uh, is something that, you know, uh, is not oftentimes talked about in our sector. And certainly there's oftentimes not even budget put aside for this kind of uh, coaching. But, you know, I would ask the people listening is, would that be a good use of budget to get you or some of your colleagues who maybe you're having trouble communicating with coaching so that, in fact, you could be more successful and, in fact, bring more value to your organization? Oh, I love that question. I, I, I have to tell you something that's not credible. Not being credible is assuming you're at the top of the chain and you know all the answers. Right. Not being credible is assuming that, that, that you, you may be the person, if you're a CEO, who are making the decisions. Love that. You have the power and the ability to make the decisions. You should be making those decisions based on the best content, based on the best information you have. Guess who has most likely significantly more information than you do? It's those people in the operational roles who are doing it on a day-to-day basis. Those people are actually working on things. Bruce, I was, I was thinking about something. When you, when you defined what a coach was, one of the things that popped into mind was – Part of being credible, there are 10 elements of being credible. Part of being credible is being coachable. So we should have and go through life with at least one or more simultaneous coaches. And you know what's interesting? 
if you don't know, if let's say you have kids and you're not up to speed with some of the latest stuff going on with technology, you could hire your kids to be your coach and say, <laughs> hey, for the next for the next three Fridays, I'd like to pay you X amount of dollars or, or I'll double your allowance if you could sit down and show me why do you like TikTok and how to use it or why do you like it? Just fill in the blank. Now, mm-hmm. guess what happens when you get that mental attitude? When you get the mental attitude that you could learn and be coached by anybody – it will open up your ability to listen. It will open up your ability to interact and engage. It will make it easier for you, under, for you to understand the inputs and outputs of people who might be in different silos inside your company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, and if, if you have that degree of openness as well and awareness, then particularly if you're in a situation where you don't have the budget and can't find the budget for a coach – then you can find free budget, free coaches rather, uh, by finding mentors within your own organization, or taking an approach to that person over in IT or that person over in marketing uh, that you're really having trouble understanding, and saying, you know, help me out here, help me out. Can you sort of coach me in what we in the contact center should understand, so that we can work better together? Right. And uh, that goes back to what you started talking about at the beginning, which is so important, which is coachability and being coachable uh, and being able to do it in in different contexts that that we're talking about here. Yeah, I I love that. And I I didn't think I was going to do that. But if you just replay the beginning of the episode, you know, I, I was taking a chance. Uh, although I, I've known Bruce well enough now to, to know that he'd go with the flow, I was taking the chances. He asked a question that I just didn't feel was the right starting point. And because mm-hmm. we we're talking about coaching, I asked the question, hey, do you mind if I do a little bit of coaching right now? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And here's what it showed. I asked the question in, in a play. Well, if you in said no, I, I would have actually just answered the question. But, but of course, you are coachable. <laughs> <laughs> right, and yeah. and so you showed you showed you were coachable, and and then I go, oh well, here's how it could be done or should be done, and and I I it's just really interesting. We're taught so another component of being credible. We're taught not to show our vulnerability. In general, we're taught not to be vulnerable. The thing is, if if people are going to get to know you. And and they, they, they really do get to know need to get to know you to ultimately trust you. People get to know you, they need to see who you are. And you can't be a know it all. You have to be somebody who says, Hey, listen, I don't know this area. Why don't you help me? Or do you know who could help me? Mm-hmm. I that's where coaches come in. Yeah. And uh one of the other things I think that has happened to me and perhaps to you as well, Mitchell, is in some cases where I take that approach and it could be uh, as a boss you know servant leader and asking questions and trying saying help me understand etc it can be in reaching out across silos to people who are really befuddling me and i'm trying to figure out what the heck are they talking about and so ask them what are you thinking about what are you actually talking about here are we missing each other is that later on okay either in the conversation or more probably in a later conversation, you can say, you know, you really helped me out with X, Y, Z. Could I offer you a couple of thoughts with regard to, right? And then there gets, there's a possibility for mutual, uh, you know, if they say yes, okay, like I said yes, if they say yes at that point, which they probably will, then you have thought about a nice way of coaching them. And at that point, you have, you've created a space where your organization, at least in, in a one-on-one sector, is becoming more communicative, more effective, because people are actually coaching each other. I love that. I, I, I'm going to offer up, I like what you said, and I'm going to offer up an even different way to, to say that. Is, mm-hmm. is now let's combine a couple areas. Let's, let's, def, let's combine uh, you being vulnerable with you having the intent and commitment to do the right thing and hoping 
the person you're with is coachable. Mm -hmm. So here's what I might suggest is I might suggest, you know, I know you just said this. I don't understand it. Can I tell you how I'm interpreting what you're saying? And then I'd like you to tell me what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Now you're laying the ownership on them, right? You're basically saying to them, Hey, I don't know what's going on. Can I share? You're basically coaching them on your framework because you could talk about why, what you're understanding and what you're hearing. You may change their opinion just by sharing how you're thinking, even though what happens is they may coach you and change your opinion. Kind of cool. Right. Yes. Very cool. Very cool. And at a more granular level, not in, as, at, at quite the same level as you're talking about, Think about what we as managers oftentimes coach agents about. We say, one of the things you should say to somebody who's on the phone and who you want to understand and don't want to offend, right, is, well, I want to help you on this. Could you help me understand what it is that you're saying? Is it, and then you mirror it back to them. Or you say, and did I get that right? It's you know, mm. human communication and human understanding at different levels. And for, you know, whether it's the sound bites that are important for the individual interaction in a call center at the frontline level, or what we're talking about here, which is more at the managerial institutional uh, enterprise level, there's, uh, they're obviously different, but there's a lot of components that are the same. I, I love that. I, I actually you got me thinking about something, Bruce, and it's it, here's something to think about. We may all be like right now, you and I are speaking English, right? And yep. and we interpret each other. We're we're mostly communicating in the same way. I think we are. The the thing that's interesting inside a company is even if it's all English, there are multiple languages. Right, And what, what we're really doing when we're asking for support is we're trying to create a common language. And the common language has to center around, like, it's very possible that the call center manager and the call center rep has a different language than marketing, than, than IT, even using the same words. And so that's all you're trying to do is understand a common framework, a common language in which to to be able to communicate more effectively. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Mitchell, we, as it happens, we just uh, sent out a, an email uh, blast uh, on, uh, as part of our um, series of videos on for agents on how to do their jobs better. So these are five- to six-minute videos. And the one uh, that's for agent soft skills that we just sent out was to how to handle foreign accents, right? And uh, in it, we talk about, you know, understanding, making sure you understand how to make sure that you can restate things, uh, maybe even bring in an interpreter, right? One of the things that uh, we say is if you have a language interpretation line, you can, in a very nice way, say, you know, I really want to help you. I'm having a little bit of trouble here. Do you mind if I bring in somebody to help interpret? Right? That, and so this is where different languages can also be, you know, you can find use in in the person who is the mentor or maybe the person in between, maybe a, another colleague who has had experience both on the marketing or the IT side and the contact center side. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it just, it's exciting because it opens up a lot of possibilities for uh, mutual coaching and for success at the end of the day. Hmm. Yeah, it's so funny. I, I there are many times when it it's important to understand the person you're speaking with. If you're if you're doing a call center, if you're just doing a regular call, who is the person and how best do they want to be communicated to? Mm-hmm. Right? Or communicated with. Is it do they speak in, in pictures? Do they do they speak in feelings? Do they do they actually speak with just stories, right? And and sometimes it could even be if if somebody has a visual personality and somebody else and the person taking the call has an oral personality, 
you know, it's possible that you get your oral per, your, your oral person to take over the call, <laughs> right? And and allowing, I think when when I start looking at the what coaches have done for me, and so I'll tell you my and Bruce, I'd love to hear from you what 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 coaches have done the best for you. For me, I have a visual personality, right? And and so sometimes. I there are things I want to do. I remember the best coach I ever had when I asked a question, what they did for me is they painted a picture. They painted a framework that I could execute in. I asked a question and they gave me a, a, an entire framework that, that in this particular case completely changed my life, but I, I just didn't have the context of the bigger picture. This is, you know, 30 years ago. And mm-hmm. And so what happened, I got lucky enough to find the coach who spoke the language I needed to hear and gave me the tool that I needed to be able to then do transition who I was into something, uh, into that person I am now. How about you, Bruce? What was the best coaching experience that you think you've had? Okay, it was probably back when I uh, was in uh, banking and I uh, had a coach, uh, a coach in the sense that she was my boss. And uh, this was a, a person who had been with the bank for many, many years, knew people all over the bank, uh, and was able to answer my questions. I mean, I, I, I had had a boss before her who was just a little bit more standoffish and cold and harder to communicate with. Uh, she was just so easy and eager to communicate that uh, it, it made a huge difference for me because she introduced me to people who I needed to communicate with and to collaborate with. So I think she was probably the best. Um, yeah, that was a good experience. So, nice. And, you know, we have, we, we have just a few minutes left, and I think Alan may have a question here. I'd, I'd just like to share one thing because when you're talking about coaches, uh, there's a coach who uh, I've worked with, well, worked with on the swimming side because I do some open water swimming, right? And uh, so Coach Pedro, uh, who lives in California, uh, does work also. Uh, he has swims that he arranges in other parts of the world. And so just a, exactly a month ago, I was in uh, Italy and did the Strait of Messina from Messina over to Calabria. And it was a, a hoot. But the language problem turned out to be quite a problem because he didn't speak Italian. And uh, the people who he'd hired to take care of us didn't speak English or Spanish and so as a result at a certain point Pedro says Bruce come up here and translate for us well I wasn't just translating I realized I was interpreting and even helping with the planning for something that was going to happen the next day where are we going to meet (laughs) right Um, amazing uh, where are we going to meet what time are we going to meet and it was it was a, sort of an amazing experience, but anyway, I'll leave it at that. It was it was so much fun. It was it was very typically sort of a, 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 an international Sicilian experience, but the food was great, you know. So anyway, mm. uh, Alan, Alan, do you have a uh, a question from somebody here? Yes, we have one that came in, and it's from Freddie, and he was asking, how do I find a coach that is right? as a call center manager. Hmm. Right for him as a call center manager. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, uh, Mitchell? Oh, sure. Well, <laughs> oh, no, actually, go ahead, Bruce, why don't you, because this is your, uh, your domain, why don't you share first and I'll add anything else afterwards. So please. Okay. I think the uh, things that we have talked about here, and probably uh, Freddie's question came in early on and maybe he hadn't heard uh, all the things we said, but I think that uh, somebody who has experience in the call center area, in other words, somebody who has actually been uh, in the area, hopefully as a manager, perhaps has moved up in the organization, if it's somebody who's going to be an internal mentor, uh, or if you're actually getting somebody from outside, somebody who has that kind of experience, because they'll be able to talk the talk and walk the walk. And you know, one of the things that, uh, Mitchell, you, you pointed out was that you need to respect each other, right? And so that uh, operates on a, a bunch of different levels, but including uh, the level of they understand my problem. They understand, you know, uh, what I have to deal with. And given the fact that contact center managers really are operating on so many different levels and have to 
uh, there's so many moving parts. Having somebody who is able to really relate to that, I think, is important. So, Bruce, you did a you did a great answer, and you needed to do that answer, and you need to do that first. I'm going to give a slightly different answer. Actually, it's a radically different answer. Not different, just just a, you, something else to keep in a perspective. First mm-hmm. of all, I would make sure, Freddie, I'd, I'd want to reach out and get more than one coach or more than one mentor. So certainly having somebody inside the organization who you respect, I have to tell you, it is a – Wonderful thing when somebody inside the organization might ask me, hey, would you mind being a coach or a mentor? Here's what I respect in you, and here's what I would like to learn. Now, don't be offended if they say no. They may not have time. The other thing I'd suggest is if for some companies they do have coaching programs or they do pay for coaching programs, so you may want to go to HR or go to your manager and say, hey, do we pay for coaching programs in any way? Right, and or sometimes you're if, it, if you have a good boss, they could recommend somebody or even set you up with their somebody at their boss's level, right? Which would be fun. The other thing is, there's also coaching on: Are you happy with who you are? Are you happy how life is going? And there may be there may be an opportunity for you not just to have a a coach that focuses on how are you going to make the job better today. But also, how do you make your life better today? And I'm not necessarily saying a life coach, but there may be some grounding that may be persistent or valuable in your life. And there are places to go. There's a lot of online places these days that you can go to. But you may run across in a networking event, someone that you want to hang out with, and you go, hey, can we coach each other? Or do you mind if I can pay you for this? Because – and. That happens, that happens all the time. It is really okay to go, I need to learn something. You seem to be good at it. Would you, would you be willing to support me? Mm, I love it. I love it. That's great. That's great. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have now. Freddie, hopefully that was uh, useful to you. Uh, Mitchell and I will now be doing a uh, f- uh, video clip of this, uh, which will be in the four- to five-minute range. And uh, we'll be doing that, in fact, right after this. So it'll uh, be the same content or uh, part of the content with the video for those people who are visual people just like Mitchell is and like I am as well. (laughs) So thank you very much to everybody for this. Uh, Mitchell, if you have any final words, uh, please uh, give them to us now because we've really, really appreciated all the words you've given us so far. Oh, no, my pleasure. It's So my name is Mitchell Levy. If if you if this was resonating enough with you, you want to reach out, go to MitchellLevy.com. You can book time on the calendar. And I've got lots of content that you can learn from and grow. And as a matter of fact, Bruce, one of the things I'm going to ask you over on YouTube, I have, I have a, a channel called Credibility Nation. And I'm going to ask you to ask me a credibility question that I will answer later today. Okay. <laughs> so Very good. come and join us Very at good. YouTube, and thank you so much for having me, Bruce. Really appreciate it. Uh, great. Okay. Thanks again, Mitchell. Okay. Now over to Alan to wrap things up. Thanks. Thanks again to Mitchell and to Bruce for your insightful discussion on today's show. Be sure to join us next month for another great show or look at our huge selection of archive shows on Hot Topic at BenchmarkPortal.com. Then click on Call Talk where you'll find over 12 seasons of this show. From all of us at Benchmark Portal, keep those headsets steady and your fingers ready. This is Alan Pockotter signing out. Have a great day.